Hi everyone, it's Liam here from US Sports Scholarships. Hope you're all safe and well and welcome to another special edition of Sports Scholarships. We've been overwhelmed with the support and uh, the questions that we've had coming in for our pros and former pros that we've had on the series. Today we're delighted to be joined by current Bristol Rovers midfielder Ed Upson, who is a former teammate of myself. Just going to give a quick intro and big up Ed, so hopefully do him justice and then we'll get into the questions and his best 11 as we have in former weeks. So most of you will know or have seen Ed playing, but he's played over 400 professional club career games, scoring 32 goals. Uh, his club career um, includes spells at Ipswich, Stevenage, Barnet, Yeovil, Millwall, MK Dons and obviously currently at Bristol Rovers as well as representing England at youth level up to under 19. So hopefully I've, A that was accurate and B I've done him justice but thanks for joining us and, and welcome Ed Upson. Cheers yeah that was, that was perfect enjoyed that. Uh, couldn't have ruined it better myself. <laughs> How have you been doing during this uh, lockdown? Not too bad yeah not too bad just um you know, stuck in every day and, and with a two-year-old, it's, it's mental. Yeah, full-time dad duties then. What's that? Full-time dad duties for you. Yeah, yeah, it's been, it's been, it's been good, but I'm um, looking forward to going, going back. It's, obviously, we're still not sure what's happening there. Have you got any exclusive insight on what's going to happen or any thoughts on that? No, no exclusive insight. Um, <laughs> my, my personal thought is that it won't, we won't finish the season. Yeah, uh, but that's that's just my opinion. That's not any uh, insight or knowledge or anything. That's yeah. just um, and, and what an incredible season you guys are having. So obviously, I guess there's some frustrations there, but hopefully, you guys can hit the form that you have this season, next season as well. Yeah, we we had a great start to the to the year, um, and we got up to to third in the league by by Christmas, um, and then we we sort of hit a few stumbling blocks after that, and we we didn't win a game in a while. And we dropped down the league, but yeah. Um, we're, we're still we're still mid table, so I think if we can if we can start next season like we did start this season, we'll have another great chance. Yeah, good stuff. We've had a lot of questions in about how people are keeping fit, and, and obviously we spoke just off camera now. And in, in terms of your fitness, seems to be fine. It's definitely still better than mine. So um, pretty sure you'll be fine. But have you been provided with any type of fitness program with the club? Or yeah, so the fitness uh, coach has been in touch every week. Um, every Sunday night, he'll he'll send in a a weekly program for us all to to do we've also had um we've also all been added into a whatsapp group chat with a gaffer where <laughs> <laughs> where he's been setting us challenges yeah um uh like not not well some of them are fitness challenges and, and some of them are skill challenges and you, you can put into little groups and and stuff so there's like a league table going on but that's that's stopped for the time being because i think they were making a decision this week on the on the outcome of the league so i think we're just waiting on that now yeah, no, so I guess that keeps it a bit more exciting, doesn't it, than just being told that you need to run by your fitness coach. Yeah, yeah, and it's tough. It is tough running on your own. When you're with a big group of lads or even with just one other lad, it's, it's so much easier. When you're on your own, it's it's really hard, really hard. But I've been going to the park and then obviously running up and down the roads here. And yesterday I bought a bike. Nice. <laughs> yeah, because I was on a little fold-up bike that we had in Milton Keynes. We've never had a garage or a shed there. So like, we bought little bikes that we could store in a cupboard under the stairs. Yeah, but doing fitness on that is mental. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But I was going down a hill yesterday, and I felt like the whole thing was just going to fold up on me. <laughs> <laughs> it's frightening. So I got a proper bike. Big stuff investment. Now I'm assuming there's different level of banter in that WhatsApp group with the gaffer than there is just with the lads. Yeah, there's zero zero conversation. <laughs> 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 good stuff as I said we'll get through some questions that we've had in from fans during the week and then we'll get into your best 11 one that I've really liked is beyond like the fitness someone wants to know what are you watching on Netflix right now that's that's a good question um, last night I watched a, on the BBC iPlayer this might not be one for everyone but uh, <laughs> my brother texted me saying oh there's a there's a show on BBC 4 so you know it's going to be old school yeah and um it was called Operation Mince Meat, and it was a um, uh, an operation they did during World War II um, to try and fool the the Germans into believing that they were going to attack somewhere else. And it was really interesting, actually. It's probably not one for everyone. It's not like um, like <laughs> Narcos or anything Netflixy, but it was good. It was good. You will have to try that one out. So, um, so then going on to your career, and I feel like inevitable place to start with you in your career is talking about the FA Youth Cup final, something that 
should have made the squad, but you got in there instead, even though you were younger. But I think maybe in hindsight, that was a good decision. Talk us through that. Obviously, for those who aren't familiar, I think it was 2005. Um, yeah. Won the FA Youth Cup against an unbelievable Southampton team that included players such as Thea Walcott, Gareth Bale was on the bench, um, a lot of pros that have gone on to have great careers. Um, and so Ed was, I think you were 15 at the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, including Basically, what, what yeah. happened was um, uh, the game was on a Friday night, and on, at that point, we were training on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So on a Thursday, Brian Kluger said to me, um, I think it was it, it was Billy Clark was ill or Owen Darwin was ill or someone, um, and he said, "Look, what you know that they're, they're ill, so you might be involved tomorrow, depending on how they um, recover. So just bring your boots and, and you come in your tracksuit to the game tomorrow night, which is the Friday, yeah. um, and just sit, just see what happens." So obviously I went to school on Friday morning, told all the boys because the game's on television, like live on Sky Sports News and that. So I told everyone. Um, that I was, had the potential to be involved, even though I thought I've got no chance. Even if I was involved, I'm not coming on. Yeah. Um, and then I got to the game, and, he, and the, Owen was still ill. Was, I'm sure it was Owen Garvin. He was still ill, so Brian said, "Like you're on the bench tonight." Blah blah blah. So I was, I was absolutely buzzing. And then um, obviously just sat watching the game, thinking, oh, "I'm not coming on." And it got to extra time, thinking, "I'm still not coming on." <laughs> <laughs> and then he brought me on. I think it was the, it was like. The last, the last minute of the first half of extra time, I think it was, and um, obviously just come on, I play, played a few passes, made like a few touches. Really nervous because there's like fifteen thousand fans there at that point, and I was I was really nervous. But um, yeah, the ball, ball just ended up dropping to me, um, and you, you know, like when I was in the youth team at uh, Ipswich, I used to like I used to just shoot from everywhere. Yeah. And, um, yeah, just shoot, shoot from all angles, all distances. Yeah, definitely. You're definitely a, a scorer of good goals, uh, rather than maybe a good goal scorer. But you know, yeah. you least expect it. You you would definitely come up with something pretty magical. To be fair to you. Yeah, the, the ball just just fell perfectly in my path, and I just hit it as hard as I could, and <laughs> took a little nick off the defender's bum, and uh, flew in, and and that was that was that. It was just a pile up, and it was. Uh, Celebrations, but I've done an interview about this last week with the Bay Free Press, and um, he said, hey, "What was it like? What was the celebrations like?" And I said, "Oh, it, it was brilliant, but I didn't, I didn't get the same feeling as the rest of the team had because they had played the whole tournament through from the beginning to end. Yeah, and I really had no involvement in it other than to come on for 15 minutes and score one goal. Yeah, and so I hadn't, I hadn't been on the journey with them. I hadn't experienced, you know, the getting to the final." Um, and looking back, obviously, I, I ended up getting all the headlines for scoring, but a few of them boys must have been really annoyed. <laughs> I was going to say, I'm sure Garvin probably chucked that one in the bin, didn't he? I <laughs> probably did, yeah. I chucked it somewhere. But to be fair, yeah. I mean, the team, I know we talked about the Southampton team, but even the Ipswich team is unbelievable. And I think we were talking to Supps um, a few weeks back and saying, not a surprise that some of them didn't go on to maybe have the careers that, you know, such as yourself has had. But I mean, that, that squad was strong and... What was that? Can you sum up what that feeling was when you, that hit the back of the net? Or was it a bit of a feeling of disbelief, really, when you saw it? Um, it was disbelief. Yeah, I think the cat, because when I shoot, the camera pans to me afterwards, and, and there's like a little clip where if you read my mouth, I'm swearing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running off. Like a Richards moment. <laughs> yeah, there's no PR training at that, that point. No, I had, I had no, nothing going on, and I um, just couldn't, yeah, couldn't believe it. Unbelievable feeling. Yeah. When was the last time you watched it? This morning? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Every morning prior to the shower, I just watch that. <laughs> One of the questions that we've got later on is like, what is your favourite goal? And obviously you're not a pro there at that point, but I'm just interested. Is that it or is there better ones that you've had in your pro? No, my my favourite goal um, is, it's actually a header that I scored for Yeovil. Um, we ended up, it was the winning goal and it was in the, like the 87th minute. Um, to make it 2-1 against Sheffield United in the playoff semi-final to take us to Wembley. Yeah. And that's, that is 100% my favourite goal. That's not the best goal I've scored yeah. by a long way. Um, but in terms of favourite goals, that would always be the one I'd look back on. Yeah, and I think, I think it's an important point because Jordan said the same thing. Obviously, Jordan's maybe scored a couple more goals than you in his career. But <laughs> and the one that came in mind was that he'd scored a late equaliser or a winner in the championship semi semi-finals. And obviously... 
the context of it is important and the youth cup one is as well but like you said when you're actually in that first team level that you scoring that goal is obviously massive um, yeah okay cool that's interesting so what else have we got here so going back to the start of your career so we've talked about the youth cup and then the next question we've got is what is it like making your pro debut i can't remember if you actually made it was it for it or was it online it, um that's a good question <sighs> I think I went online first. I think because I went to Stevenage and on loan and Barnet on loan, but I'm not sure to be honest if that was after or before I played in the cup for Ipswich. Yeah. So I honestly couldn't tell you. Like a vivid memory of I remember that was my first game. I felt nervous before. It's all just you you remember kind of having a few firsts that that season, I guess. Yeah, yeah. I don't I don't have that one individual memory of a of a debut, which is strange. <laughs> yeah, it must have been, mate. Um, that's yeah. So we've got one here, though. Obviously, a lot of people that are watching are going to know you actually for playing for other clubs other than Ipswich. But obviously, I played with you at Ipswich coming through the academy, and it does, I'm sure, form a big part of your career. What was it like making your first team debut for Ipswich? Yeah, that, that was a big moment um, for me. It was away at Shrewsbury. Um, and I come on in the second half uh, in, in, a, in a cup competition. Um, I can't remember the name of the cup. I can't remember to be honest. But um, we ended up beating them up. We we uh, won on penalties. I ended up scoring. I say the winning penalty, but it was actually the last penalty before really? they missed. Yeah. So <laughs> it wasn't really the winning penalty, but I'll, I'll say it was just for sake. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, that that was big for me at the time. And um, and then a few a few times after that, I was in the, I was in, on the bench in the championship. Um, one of them was away at West Brom and I really felt like I was going to get on that day and, and I didn't. And and then after that, I played one more game in the Cup for Ipswich um, against Peterborough and, and that was that was it for me. Yeah. And okay. I was told by Roy Keane uh, uh, to get a regular first team games, I was going to need to move on. And that was, in looking back, the best thing that happened. Yeah, that's interesting you say because obviously we, we asked Jordan kind of the same thing. It's something he's gone on to have a really good career, but actually, even though he spent his youth at Ipswich, never really was there for an extended period of time. And somebody asked a similar question to him, do you think you'd have been as successful? And he said, not really, because I was then able to go to Huddersfield, I think it was, and, and, and literally start every game for the season, which is the ideal time. I mean, arguably, you could have stayed at Ipswich, but you might have ended up going out on loan or maybe sitting on the bench or playing reserve football, I guess, which is, is not what you needed. Yeah, that's the problem, because then you end up being 22, 23, having never played a game. Yeah. And and then no one's interested you at that point because it's about experience. And if you've got no experience at that age, you're in you're in trouble. Yeah, true. And it seems like it's just getting younger and younger. I mean, Mbappe scoring and playing in the World Cup final at 19 probably not helped everyone's cause either. But you know, it is it's difficult, I guess, transition. And I'm sure you felt it because you've gone from being put into the limelight on a maybe a smaller scale at 15, but then from then you've pretty much gone on to be a professional and playing men's football from there. Was that a difficult period for you? Or Jordan said when he was at that age, looking back, you're just not naive to it, but you've just got this kind of young innocence that you are confident, you're not nervous, you don't really give two thoughts about it. Is that, was that the case for you as well? Yeah. Um, so my first season at Yeovil, because that's my first real proper season, um, being a proper f p p part of a first team environment, you know? Yeah. Um, and that was... I, I was nervous at times, but not as not as much as I thought I would be. I think Jordan's right in the fact that you are sort of because you've never been in that position before. Yeah, you're not expecting anything. You're just you're just being. Yeah. you know, you're just, just um, experiencing it for the first time. And and um, as you said, that first season, I, I think I played sort of 28 games, 30 games, something like that. But it was like I want that. That wasn't like a starting every game. That was some coming on. The, off the bench, some starting, and the next season, um, I sort of said to myself, "This is the season I'm going to have to play every game." Yeah. Um, and actually, actually said to myself, and this this sounds awful, um, but is 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 a <laughs> it is a true it was a it's completely true that I said to myself, if we sign any centre midfielders this year, I'm going to try and injure them in training. <laughs> Like if if I wasn't in in and around the the team, do you know what I mean? If if there was anyone in front of me in the team, and, and it wasn't something that I was probably going to actually physically do, yeah. But it it was a mindset of of like I need to play every game, 
and I need it to be me playing every game and no one else. Yeah, yeah. You, you know what I mean? So it wasn't it wasn't an actual like I'm going to actually hurt someone. It was yeah. more of a, more of an attitude change in myself where I thought it's like now or never where I'm going to have to play these games and get them in. Yeah, maybe you've been spending too much time with Roy Keane at Ipswich, thinking of Roy Keane yeah. and but It's interesting you should say that. I don't know if you've been watching, but obviously a lot of people have been watching Last Dance on Netflix at the moment. I haven't seen it yet, no. You've got to watch it. But again, it's just looking into the mentality of Michael Jordan, who would win at all costs. And basically, yeah. teammates, he probably wasn't the most loved person on the team, but would do whatever he needed to do to win them championships. And you either kind of get on board with what he wants to do or you don't and basically he yeah. said, I would never ask anyone to do something that I'm not willing to do myself um, because the guy was obsessed with winning um, but yeah, yeah for anyone listening but particularly you Ed you, you should probably rec- I'd recommend you watching that that's definitely uh, yeah I'll have a look it's up there with your BBC4 Mint Meat um, <laughs> 2 programme um, and then talking of like as I said MJ's an inspiration for a lot of people somebody's asked here who was your inspiration growing up from a football perspective so um, when I was younger, I was a Man United fan through my dad being a Man United fan and, and making me a Man United fan. Yeah. Um, but I was more than happy to go along with that because they were the best team <laughs> in the world at that point, really. Uh, I remember um, when we won the treble and um, I remember watching it in the front room when Solskjaer scored the goal to, to, to win in the uh, European Cup final. I actually cried with happiness. <laughs> and that's, that's how much I loved Man United back then. <laughs> and that, like now, now it's not so much because when you get into the game, you, you don't follow other teams as much, and now you and you don't. Your teammate scores. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, back back then, like obviously that was they were my heroes growing up. That sort of team. So it was Skulls, Keane, and before that it was Cantona. Um, yeah. So it was all all the old Man United legends were my inspiration growing up. Yeah, I did think that Cantona might get brought up when I saw that question. Um, okay, so going on to the next one, we talked about your career. Someone's put, what's the best moment of your career to date, if we haven't already covered? Yeah, well, that would be um, the promotion with Yeovil. Yeah. Um, I think at any promotions, you're going to be your best moment. Yeah. Um, and that's the one I've, I've had, um, especially with Yeovil to the championship. That was, that was some achievement. And I think that will be looked back on as something unbelievable because... The more money that gets pumped into the game now, you're going to see less, less and less teams like that making that leap into the championship. Um, that was just a one-off squad, a one-off team that just clicked. Um, that, 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 you know, that Wembley final and the lead up to it's my biggest um, achievement. I'd say I'm happy that when I was younger I played for England, but again, that's I don't I don't class the youth team stuff on the same level as the professional. Yeah, of course that. Makes- We've had, we've had a Millwall fan that's um, asked you specifically what was your best moment at Millwall. Obviously, you didn't get promotion, but is there a particular moment that sticks in your mind? Um, not my best moment, but a moment that really sticks in my mind was um, I got sent off against uh, Wigan. Um, and it was I think at that point it was too old and we were fighting for um, survival. And I was really like, when you play for Millwall and, and the crowd's there, you really get into it like you wouldn't believe like <laughs> you're um you, you feel it in in your heart and your chest you know like p- playing for them and playing in front of them and yeah and I got sent off and I, to be fair I got sent off for something silly I, I pushed uh I pushed the guy in the face but it, what it was was um he had just literally two-footed one of our lads yeah. um in the corner and it was proper nasty and I, and I felt like it was over the top do you know what I mean so my my reaction he was he was just getting up off the floor and I pushed him back down onto the floor as it just a split second reaction, you know, like I was just in the heat of the moment, in the heat of the battle yeah. and um, got sent off. And as I was walking from the corner flag to the tunnel, which is in the middle of the pitch, I got a standing ovation. <laughs> um, that, that's, one of my, that's one of my fondest memories, actually, of, of Millwall, which is funny. Obviously, the Mill, Millwall fans are pretty infamous for some reasons or other, but do you feel like added pressure from that when you're playing for them or...? Um, not, not added pressure. I, I always felt like when I was in the tunnel, particularly, uh, and you know, so, sometimes people think footballers were just at top energy constantly. You know what I mean? They're always at hundred percent, but there, there, there are games sometimes when you're in the tunnel and, and you, you, you're not feeling quite a hundred percent, you know, you, you've prepared right all week, but you're still 
a little bit tired or your legs are a little bit leggy from the week's training or something. Yeah. Um, and when you're, when you're in a tunnel and they play their song and you hear the fans um, like getting up for the game and, and singing the song as well, I, it always brought me back up to 100% every single time. Nice, nice. Interesting insight there. So then the next thing that we've got here before we uh, am wary again, I could sit here and probably ask you questions all day, is to um, go into your best 11. The last one is, have, have you got a top bit of advice for any aspiring young players uh, listening right now who potentially, you know, wanting to emulate um, and achieve? Who potentially what? Sorry, I missed that. Want to like emulate what you've done and achieved and becoming a professional. Um, I would just say work hard and um, keep your head down because um, you're going to get a lot of setbacks during the way. That's another thing people think that football is just, just like roses and, and happiness. And it's, it's not, you know, most of it is, is probably negative and, and that, that is the way it is. And, and you have to have a strong mindset and a strong character, I think, to stick with it. Yeah, no, that's that's very good insight. And and Matt Holland actually kind of echoed the same mindset. And he said at some point, a manager or a club or someone isn't going to have you as a player. Uh, yeah. might, might not fit their style of play. They might just not like you as a player or rate you. But he said, you know, keep an open mind because there's hundreds of other clubs out there or managers that might, you know, fancy yeah. you. And if you work hard, you're kind of giving yourself the best possible chance for that. So um, good stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's get into this best 11. I'm excited to hear who you've got. In previous ones, I've tried to guess, but you've had so many clubs, I'm not even going to bother. <laughs> I spent ages last night looking through all the teams I've been in and, and the players I've played with. It took me ages. Yeah. Um, but I've, I've come up with my list. I'm happy with it. Good, good, good. I appreciate the effort. So let's start with uh, your goalkeeper then. Who have you gone for? I've gone for Wayne Hennessy yep. in goal. Um, we had him on loan. Uh, I think he was on loan from Wolves when we were in the championship with Yeovil. Yeah. Um, top keeper. Um, great size to him. He's he's, he's massive, um, and you can see now that he's obviously gone on in the Premiership to to be a top keeper there as well. Yeah. yeah, really good lad. Yeah, looking from the outside with Hennessy, is one that maybe isn't getting the, all the headlines. But I think if anyone's not getting <laughs> headlines and they're a goalkeeper in the Premier League, probably shows that you're a decent keeper because <laughs> yeah. it's easy to, to make mistakes at that level and really get ridiculed. So I think any keeper that can play over a hundred games in the Prem clearly is you know literally well. <laughs> Yeah, well, like you said, if you're if you're a goalkeeper making headlines, then most of the time you're doing something wrong. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, can't disagree with that. Good keeper. What about back? Yeah. Four? Back for how many have you gone for across the back? I've gone, I've gone for a four-four-two. Yeah, old school man. Who, yeah. who, who have we got right back? Uh, right back. I've got my list here. <laughs> right back had a toss-up between Ryan Fredericks, yeah. um, who was on loan at Millwall when I was there from Tottenham. Yeah. And Carlos Edwards, and I've gone for Carlos. Yeah, uh, he he was in his late thirties when he was with us at, at Millwall, and he was superb. Yeah. And when I mean superb, I mean particularly for his age, was just so good, so fit, so strong, so agile. Still, boys used to call him the fossil. <laughs> <laughs> he was on real at the end of his career. Yeah. Well, before, obviously, but he, I mean, he was unreal for Ipswich. Well, that's what I mean, and I played with him after that. Yeah, uh, he was just—he was excellent. I'm, I'm having him all day at right back. He's still amazing for Woodbridge Town. Do you know he still plays for Woodbridge locally? I know he does. Yeah, he's getting like 20 goals a season. I bet. I bet he's still excellent. I bet he's still excellent. He's just—he'll just never die. He's just one of them. Just go on forever. Why do you think that he's like had that longevity? Is he like a super professional guy as well? As, you know, he's fit, but is he in there early? disciplined or I, I never really seen him in the gym I never really you know I, I, I never made a note of him being there longer than anyone else or anything like that I think it was just pure genetics <laughs> you know just just good genes just really good genes yeah, well clearly if he's doing what he's doing at semi-pro he could probably still turn out someone professionally now as well easily easily decent okay cool so who have you got yeah. on at left back, I've gone for Jamie McAllister, who was my captain at Yeovil when we got promoted. Yeah. Um, he'd come from Bristol City at the time, and uh, so he was obviously like fairly local to the area, even though he's a Scottish lad. I think he, he still lives, and he's still he's the assistant manager at Bristol City now. Okay. Um, and he he was just like in terms of like a leader and, and a captain, 
Um, cause that, that Yeovil team we had at the, at the time was quite young across the board. Yeah. Um, and we had him and we had James Hayter up front with like the two experienced lads and, and the way, uh, Jamie sort of carried himself was like a real, uh, lesson to all of us at that time. And, and he really led us to promotion that season. Yeah, quite interesting. So you've got two fullbacks, and actually two fullbacks that have both been captains at a lot of club teams, which obviously is, is normally when you look at a defender as a centre back. What type of player is or like was McAllister? Is he one to get forward as well, or more? Difficult? Yeah, he, he could. He could do. He he's another one in the mould of Carlos, really. Sort of, he was in his thirties at that point, um, mid thirties, and he was still up and down the wing like like like, like the younger lads. Yeah, yeah. Um, still proper fit, a, a real athlete. Yeah, good stuff. So who have you got centre backs? Centre backs, I've got Shane Duffy and Danny Shittu. Yeah. Shane Duffy, we had on loan at Yeovil. Um, I think he was on loan from Everton at that point. Um, he was just a rock, just solid, would win every header. Con like literally any any ball in the air would win it. And you see that now, he's, he's carried on doing that. Yeah. Um, and Shittu was just an absolute man mountain. Where's Duffy at now? Yeah. He's at Brighton. Brighton. Yeah. Um, and Shitsu, yeah, it's just a just a big, big beast. Mm -hmm. I remember one. I know you spoke. I know you've spoken to Jordan. Um, that we were we were in the tunnel when Jordan was playing for Blackburn, and I was at Millwall with Danny Shitsu. Yeah. And uh, he's the captain. So we're lining up in the tunnel before the game. Danny's at the front. Obviously, he's a captain. And and all the teams are out. We're all in the tunnel. And Jordan's not come out. Jordan's in the in the away dressing room still. And because obviously Jordan was going to be up against Danny. Yeah. And Danny was going, Danny was in the tunnel with his deep voice going, where is he? Where's Jordan? <laughs> like this, right? I, and I swear, I've never seen anything like it. I, I, was in, I was in the line and everyone was like looking across the line at each other like, what's going on? And he's going, I'm going to eat him. Get Jordan out here now. Where is he? <laughs> like this. And then like Jordan, um, and I don't know why Jordan didn't come out of, the, of his dressing room, whether it was a thing he does or, or he just left his shirt in there. But, he come out of the dressing room as we were all walking out of the tunnel. So he come out late, and he, Jordan didn't actually score that game. And at, at that point, Jordan was one of the best strikers in, in the championship, scoring every game. And, yeah. And that was just what Danny was like, you know, because he, he knew probably Jordan would have would have had him out there, you know, like technically and, and goal positioning wise. But he had that intimidation factor where he could scare you. Yeah. Well, uh, he's one of the nicest. He's one of them. He's like the nicest bloke in the world, but on the pitch, he's frightening. Yeah, maybe he was like using his experience to try and like leverage anything he can, as I said. He definitely it. was. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. exactly what he was doing. Yeah. Going back to last dance with uh, MJ, he'd like actually say to one of the players, like, "Oh, who's marking me?" And he'd say, "Oh, blah blah's marking me." I'll go in and tell him I'm going to score fifty against him tonight. And they'd walk in and be like, "Oh, uh, MJ just said to pass you a message. He's going to score fifty against you tonight." <laughs> but then he actually would. <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, that's brilliant. Okay, so cool. So we've got the back four there. Uh, starting with right midfield. Right midfield. I've gone with Albert Adoma. I played with Albert um, when I was on loan at Barnet, one of my first loans. Um, and he was, he was seriously good back then. Um, and after that, I think he signed for Bristol City after that. And he's gone on to have a, a brilliant career. But back then, he was quick, pacey. You just knew he was getting a move because it, it was the end of a season when I went there on loan and and he left the season after, and you, you just knew it. he was guaranteed to be gone. He was guaranteed to get a decent move and have a good career. He was just rapid, good on the ball with it as well. Yeah. And uh, one of the things I just remember every time I see him is just defenders just panicking, or like you just know as a defender he's going to be giving you an absolute evening where you've got to put a shift in because even if yeah. he's on it, his pace will just get him in behind you. Yeah. A lot of players they have pace, but they don't have the finesse to go with it. But he had a bit of both and. It was a good combination, especially at that point. That was League Two for Barnet, so you just knew he was going to rip it up. Yeah, I guess that's quite exciting when you are playing like League One, League Two, and you see these kind of next wave of players come in. And if you can get it right, so I'm guessing like with Yeovil, you had a lot of young players who've gone on to have really good careers as well as a few experience. But that's probably yeah. you wouldn't normally be able to assemble in three, four years because all those guys maybe do go on to the next level. Um, and and when we spoke to other players, you can actually clearly see which of those players are because even though you're all top professionals, you can kind of tell if someone's got that. Yeah, no, you can tell. You can tell. Good stuff. So who have you got on left midfield? Well, leads nicely onto that because that that's someone on left midfield who you could tell from the beginning was going to be excellent. Yeah, and we, that Arby Barnes. Yeah, 
the Harvey came to MK um, in the second half of the season, in my first season there. He was on loan from Leicester. Yeah. And from I think he must have been 18. And he, he almost kept us up single-handedly. Some <laughs> of his goals and his performances were frightening. Yeah. You, you could just, again, someone who's got the pace, but the finesse and the quality to go with it. That that combination is just is is Premier League stuff, yeah, yeah, and um, yeah. you could just see he was going to go on and do big things. And I think I think he, he's still got a lot to, a lot of things still in his career that he's gonna he's gonna go on and achieve. Yeah, was, he's a top. obviously he did unbelievable at West Brom. Was it- yeah, yeah, he was unbelievable there. Yeah, unbelievable there. And you know you're doing well when Leicester recall you. And he's pretty much hit the ground running with with Leicester as well. And like you said, whether Leicester continue to develop and and kind of keep pushing towards the top, if not, he's the type of player who might even get a move to, you know, an even another level or start representing his country regularly. But uh, yeah, I think he could definitely go again. He could definitely play for England. I think he could definitely, no disrespect to Leicester, but I think he could play for one of the top four. Yeah, um, yeah. just superb. Yeah, what MK Dons have got decent youth recruitment, like obviously having Delhi Ali as well. I'm pretty sure that that was before your time there, was it, Ali? That was before me, yeah, a couple of seasons before. I heard that he was just unreal for MK as well, and I think he was like 17 too. So yeah, yeah, they got a good, good eye for a young player there. Yeah, decent. Okay, cool. So going into centre midfield, have you, have you made the team yourself? No. <laughs> you would have. No, been- <laughs> I'm just watching from the side, clapping. <laughs> crying, crying at the goals going in. Crying, yeah, <laughs> crying and clapping at the same time. <laughs> We've got, I've got two Williamses in centre mid together. Yeah. I've got Gavin Williams, who I played with at Yeovil, yeah. and Sean Williams, who I played with at Millwall. Um, Sean is someone that I signed with, um, I think within a week of each other at Millwall. So we sort of made good friends, got on str- straight from the start, yeah. um, roomies and stuff. and. And uh, he's, he's he's like calm, cool, collected, um, wonderful left foot. Um, so he'll be in there to sort of hold the game together. And then I've got Gavin Williams in there for a bit of creativity, um, goals, assists, attacking. The guy's mental though, right? Oh, he's in there for banter as well. Yeah, he's in there for pure <laughs> Just to keep the spirits up for everyone else. Yeah, I just don't even remember being a youth player. He's banter. He's just constant. He's non-stop with it, isn't he? He is non-stop. Like I was saying um, when we spoke a little bit before about his um, his prank on on Ian Miller, where he silly stringed his car, <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and the son baked it onto his car. So when Ian rubbed it off, he had to he rubbed all the paintwork off as well, and Gav had to pay to get it resprayed. <laughs> there was another one at the Oval where we went paintballing, and um, he bought he bought smoke grenades from the paintball course, but didn't didn't let them off. Like he kept them. So when we come back to training on the Monday. He uh, he got these smoke grenades and he chucked them in the physio room and shut the door and like held the door shut. So everyone in there was just getting smoked out. <laughs> you, you would be in the shower. You'd be in the shower at Yeovil, and um, you'd be nervous because you know any minute now Gav's coming round the corner with a fire extinguisher and spraying you all with it. <laughs> he's just like he's just one of them guys that you're just on edge around constantly, but really funny. Obviously, with Gav, like, I'm, I'm pretty sure he was playing for Hereford at like 16, like starting. I think it was Hereford, anyway. He was playing in the conference week in, week out at 16. And I've seen other interviews with people that have also like put him in their best 11, but also said that maybe he could have even played a higher level. Um, yeah, I think I think he could have played higher level. He was excellent, really. Good. Like you talk about his banter and how funny he was and that, but as a footballer, he was he was excellent. Technique was. I remember even just doing like a finishing finishing session, and obviously me being a forward, fancy myself. I think I probably against subs to be fair, but maybe scored like two. Gav probably scored like fifteen, all top bins, like the most casual technique. You know, yeah, ever. yeah. It was really good. It was really good. People don't don't remember him to be as good as he was. I think. Yeah, but obviously he did get his move to West Ham, but obviously you know I'm sure it's competitive places there as well. Okay, cool. So you've got your midfield. Who have we gone for up front? Up front, I've gone for Paddy Madden. Because um, I can't look past him for that that season he had at Yeovil, where if if he had the ball in around the box, you just you just knew it was a goal. You know, you know when a striker gives you that feeling. Yeah. Uh, and and as a, as a, as a as a player who's not a striker, it's it's such a nice feeling to have that if he gets into the position and you get him the ball in any position, he is going to score it. And in that season where we went up, he literally was any any half chance he would score it. 
As um, a, so I can't, as a midfielder, are you subconsciously looking for him then, rather than the other forward he's playing up front with? Or? Um, you are, in, in a way. He, he was playing up front with James Hayter in that season. And James um, got some good goals that season and, and, and helped along the way. But Paddy got the headlines because obviously he won the, the golden boot and everything. Yeah. Um, they, were, they were together. You know when a partnership just clicks? Yeah. That, that, was, that was that partnership. And, and uh, yeah, he was... He was a third choice striker. You think, I'm not going to get many minutes this season. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you you literally were, and, and uh, they, they were just they were brilliant together. But Paddy was uh, particularly particularly good at finishing, and and you can see that everywhere he's gone since he's he's racked up the goals as well. Yeah, because obviously I mean he must be getting on a little bit now. But every time because he will move, uh, he's moved quite a few clubs. But every time you just see him scoring goals, scoring goals, and sometimes I'm thinking, geez, like someone else needs to take a punt on him at maybe a higher level because the guy just scores goals. I feel like I, I can't. Yeah, obviously he played in the championship with Yeovil, but he left, I think, in, in, the, in the summer and went to Scunthorpe. And uh, I, I can't believe he hasn't played in the championship more. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely good goal scorer. So who have you gone up front with him? Up front with him is Ricardo Fuller. Yeah? Yeah, and uh, I know it's a bit old school. Uh, and he wasn't in his prime when he, was, when he was with us at Millwall, but he was still, he was just... You know, you know when you look at someone, and you know they've been they've been a top player and they've played at the top level and they've scored brilliant goals, and you think maybe, maybe now he's just going to relax a bit, but he didn't relax. He just he carried on, and and uh, he's a good guy with it as well. Um, so yeah, he, let them two, them two up top, I think, be formidable partnership. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, and, oh, um, he he scored. Uh, there's like a forgotten goal almost that he scored against Aston Villa. And it's one of the best goals you'll ever see. And no one ever really talks about it. Just if you YouTube Ricardo Fuller v Aston Villa, just watch that goal, mate. It's absolutely... If Messi or Ronaldo scored that, mate, it'd be the best goal I've ever scored. Talk, talk us through it. What happens? Uh, so the ball comes into him and he's got like, his back to the defender and he flicks the ball up with his right foot, but flicks it over the defender's head. Yeah. You, uh, you might remember it. Runs through, scores the goal. It's, 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 it's mental. It's yeah. mental. Obviously, Ricardo was at Ipswich probably at the same time you were, just before you, you went on to leave Yeovil. And um, yeah. I remember six, I was injured as always. I was sitting in the press room and Ricardo had just come on loan. I think he'd, I don't know if he scored and then got sent off and then scored again. And um, the interview was saying, like, how are you enjoying your time at Ipswich? And he's just like, not at all. And the, and the, <laughs> the guy who asked him was a bit taken back. He went, I should be at Southampton in the starting eleven there now. <laughs> and I was like, "Wow, like that confidence is amazing." But like, also the honesty of it was just like, it always sticks with me that he had that type of brutal honesty. But also, you know, great that he backed himself. Yeah, I love that sort of bravery. You know, where you speak, you really speak your mind like that. I think that's excellent. I love all that. Yeah, maybe he was one that was a bit underrated because again, like he's just a nuisance, and whether. Full of scoring goals, his hold up play was phenomenal. He just would have been a nightmare to play against, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, he was a good player, very good. good. Player. So, so run us through your, your full 11 there just to give a recap. Get All right, so I've got, I've got my bit of paper. I've got Wayne Hennessy in goal, yeah. right back Carlos Edwards, centre backs Shane Duffy, Danny Shitu, left back Jamie McAllister, left wing Harvey Barnes, centre mid Gavin Williams, Sean Williams, right. Right mid, Albert Adoma. Up front, Paddy, Maddo, Paddy Madden, Ricardo Fuller. Very good. And then to add to that, who are you having as your captain in there? <sighs> Got a few candidates there. Is it McAllister or Edwards? Or? I'm going Jamie McAllister. Okay, cool. And then here's a controversial one. You can sit on the fence like everyone else if you want. Who would your manager be? <laughs> <laughs> I'm probably going to sit on the fence. I had a, few, I had a couple of good managers. Um, you Gary could... Johnson, Gary yeah. Johnson, and the Oval obviously um, got the best out, out of a squad that was um, not technically the best in the league, but he got the best out of us. Yeah. Ian Holloway, who signed me at Mill, had some brilliant footballing ideas and wanted to play um, brilliant football. It didn't go down too well at Mill at the time, uh, and he left in a negative fashion. I remember him um, asking you how you're getting on at Millwall and you just said like that sometimes you'd be like having a worldie or a really good game at half time and he would just be like, right, we're chucking three forwards on and you'd get subbed. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he, did some, he did some mad stuff. Um, 
but he's a, he's a real good character and a nice nice guy yeah um, um yeah, I've I've had a lot of managers. Uh, almost every club I've been at, I've had three managers at every single club. Yeah. Um, so it's too many to mention. I'm just gonna I'm gonna leave that one. <laughs> the manager, but I guess also regardless of how a manager does within a role, you can always take something from their time as your manager as well. Yeah, yeah. You might not like uh, you might not like them as a person, or you might not like some of their ideas. But if you're looking to coach when you're when you get older, there's always something you can take from every individual one, whether that's something you think you don't want to do that or something you think I want to take that on, you know, is there's something to learn from all of them. Yeah. Is that something that, have you been doing your coaching badges or something you'd be looking to do? It's something I'm looking to do this season. Um, before, the coaching side of it didn't really interest me, to be totally honest with you. Um, but I, I, sort of older I get, the more I'm, I'm swaying towards it. Do you think part of that's because you are, well, you're, not, you're still, what, 30? You're 30? I'm 30, yeah. So you still, is it becoming because you're one of the older heads in the dressing room and, and being able to kind of pass on advice and experience to the younger lads that are coming through this kind of influence? Uh, it's, it's a bit of that and a bit of fear that, you know, you are coming to the end eventually. Yeah. Um, and you need to have something in place and be prepared for it. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's a bit of, like, I want to do it and it's also a bit of, I'm forced to do it at the same time you know because I, I am getting it seems weird because I feel like me and you like I feel like we were just at Ipswich a, a few years back when we were both sort of 18 19 and, and now we're talking now and we're 30 you must be 31 yeah in fact I was saying to you off camera I went for a run with Jack Ainsley who was with us at Ipswich as well and he said oh it's my 30 and I'm thinking I remember driving you into Ipswich when you're 15 like it's absolute bonkers yeah and the time just goes so quick it's it's crazy yeah um so I'm gonna to have to start looking into something after football. Yeah, good stuff. Okay, cool. Well, thanks for recapping on your best eleven there. The last thing that obviously we're here with US sports scholarships is just to kind of get your insight and thoughts on scholarships in America. Obviously, you know we were part of the same youth squad, and for me, it was like a no-brainer that I wanted to go and do that. Have you known other players that have done it, or what are your thoughts on it, just in general? And I thought so. It's a great thing to be doing and to be looking to do because obviously you carry on your education at the same time. Um, uh, I remember Paul Goddard's my my agent, and when it wasn't going so well at Ipswich, because <clears throat> he had, he I think he had been out to America a lot, and he he had sort of said, you know, it might be something you want to look into. Um, would would be that side of things um, because it's it's a it's a, a very good option for getting your education and playing football at the same time. Um, and you know, being in America, I, you know, it's when I, I went on holiday there recently. It's the first time I've been to America, and I absolutely loved it. I'm yeah. desperate to go. I don't think there's anywhere better you you could be playing sport and going to going to college. So yeah. What what part of America did you go to? We went to Vegas and uh, LA. No, it's not not a bad first place to uh, sample America then. No, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. Uh, we're looking to go back, but obviously as soon as, as soon as we can. Yeah, good but, stuff. Yeah, I think, like you said, I'm sure when Paul was thinking of that as an option for you as well, it's not just even thinking, OK, get a degree and play football. But obviously it is a good opportunity to potentially go pro, particularly back then out in America, to get drafted. And, you know, some of our players do get drafted each season. So I guess there was that kind of mindset behind maybe looking. Yeah, yeah. obviously, you know, you get the bonus of playing football and getting an education. So you get you get the best of both worlds. But there's it's not like you've given up on your dream. Your, the dream is still alive and kicking and, and you've got a great chance of, of going on and playing professional sport in America and even back in England. Yeah, I think like you said, it's about, you're talking about like after you stop playing and, and that's what's such amazing about America is that regardless, so if you look at Tim Howard or Dempsey or all these other, you know, great American players that have come through, they've all got degrees, you know, they've been through that system because as we know, you know, not everyone's as fortunate um, to have had the career that you have when you've played over 400 games um, and you need something to fall back on. So, um, you know, that's what we yeah. find a lot of our players. It is such a good exit strategy for them. 100%. When you look at the stats of um, being a professional footballer, um, they're, they're very, very low. They are very low. So you need, you need that backup plan 100%. Definitely. Well, yeah, great thoughts there and insight. Thanks again for your time and obviously stay safe. We look forward to seeing you playing out there for Bristol again soon um, and speak to you soon. Cheers, Ed. All right. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye.